Today I'm going to show you guys how I made my Faraday cage. And for those of you wondering what the hell is a Faraday cage, these are actually used in power plants and various circumstances to block electromagnetic fields. So this isn't something that's, you know, made up or uncommon. It actually has a use in certain industrial processes pertaining to radiation. But why do we need a Faraday cage? You know, what is EMF? Electric and magnetic fields that are invisible areas of radiation. Depending on the device, the wavelength varies drastically, and this is what affects how dangerous the device is. Something like a microwave or a cell phone tower is going to be drastically higher frequency than a cell phone, and that cell phone is going to be drastically higher than a power circuit, you know, the plug in your wall. Of course, there are unavoidable sources of EMF depending on your environment. You know, if you're in a city surrounded by cell towers and antennas, if you're at UFC 244 with thousands of people and their cell phones, but most people are able to remove high sources of EMF from their homes. In no particular order, Wi-Fi routers can be directly routed and turned off. Smart meters, AKA the new electric meter, can be blocked with a mesh or you can opt out. Microwaves don't have to be used. Cell phones can be kept on airplane mode and turned off, uh, especially at night. And newer devices like Apple Watches, AirPods, uh, Bluetooth, you know, iPads, anything with a Wi-Fi signal that is not necessary can be avoided. If you guys want to know more about removing EMF from the home, I have two videos I'm going to link at the end here. One is where I went around my house and showed you guys those sources I just mentioned. Another is a podcast I had with EMF Minimalist where we go into all the different types of you know frequencies and fields and concerns you might have. Despite all of this, in any type of environment, you can't remove EMF completely unless you're in the middle of nowhere off the grid. Even with this Faraday cage, I am not blocking lower frequency fields of radiation, dirty electricity. This mesh, very effective at higher frequencies like Wi-Fi, cell phone towers, but not for lower frequencies like the dirty electricity, like power lines. So bear that in mind. Uh, there are various devices uh, that you can use uh, to measure EMF levels. And I will demonstrate here that this Faraday cage does block Wi-Fi, but it does not block electromagnetic fields. Oh, so before we look at this, I forgot to mention some common EMF related symptoms are headache, stomach ache, insomnia, poor sleep quality, in general, being on edge, like very reactive, very emotionally driven. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You know, everyone right now is on their cell phone and a very emotional and reactive population is super easy to control. The reason this is happening is because these electromagnetic fields actually disrupt our cellular function uh, to a pretty extreme extent. Here I have my cell phone on airplane mode and here I have a safe and sound classic EMF meter. This is relatively affordable. And even when a phone is on airplane mode, it will emit a Wi-Fi signal every 30 seconds or so. So if you are sleeping, you know, turn it off. And even during the day, if you have your cell phone on you on airplane mode, it is better off kept a few feet away from you. Uh, that being said, this meter doesn't actually measure a numeric value. So there's no way of telling how high it is, although you know there is a range for each of these colors. So we're gonna turn airplane mode off and the meter immediately goes to extreme and sometimes it's flashing. But even just you know a few feet away from a cell phone, you know, if you're like five or ten feet away from the cell phone this will already start going down drastically. And, you know, 10 feet away from the cell phone, you're pretty safe. And it's not always emitting such a strong signal. But, you know, aluminum mesh is effective at blocking signals. You know, because this would normally be high going off the chart, but right now this aluminum mesh does block most of the signal. As you guys could see, the aluminum mesh is effective at blocking a fair amount of EMF, but some still gets through. So even if you do set this up, you know, you can't be next to Chernobyl, it's still not gonna be effective. But if we do put ourselves in this aluminum mesh with the meter, uh, the meter is now flashing green, uh, which is ideal. 
So th this type of meter will start flashing on green when it's incredibly low levels of EMF. And it's completely quiet in here and flashing green. That's how I know when I get in here, the EMF levels are minimal. But as soon as I get out, even when my cell phone is off, this starts making some noise. So the ambient EMF levels in this room, despite having no Wi-Fi, despite having the cell phone on airplane mode, are still higher than in here. Uh, so we know the Faraday cage is working effectively, but uh, this is a lower field analyzer. So this, this will look at the lower fields, the dirty electricity. So right now we're measuring magnetic fields and it's at 325 right now. And if I go in here, it doesn't get lower. It's actually even higher over here near my wall where all the, the power circuits are. So these types of magnetic fields, you know, these are emitted by the earth. These are emitted by power lines and all that type of stuff. And this type of Faraday cage does not reduce those. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you turn the power off to your house, these magnetic waves will be reduced. And if you keep your bed, you know, away from the walls, away from the power lines, you know, I'm sure if we go in the corner over here where, uh, you know, the power lines connect to this house, the levels will be much higher. Now, by no means am I a handyman. I am actually quite the opposite. I, I can figure things out on my own. Like I could watch a video on YouTube how to fix my car, but uh, this is super ghetto, super cheap in comparison to other options. Uh, total cost for this was about $320. And that's because I had to buy a bed frame. Uh, so this is just like a black, uh, I'm assuming it's made out of aluminum bed frame that I put together. I bought it on Amazon. If I recall, it was like $180. Got it the next day, put it together really easy. Uh, put my queen bed on it. And then I bought some aluminum mesh from Home Depot and I got creative, uh, you know, pretty much layered it over and zip tied it together. Uh, so this aluminum mesh is what's actually used in like window screening. Uh, so this is ad fours. It says aluminum on it. Uh, the color is bright. Uh, that means that there's nothing sprayed on it. Uh, they sell carbon, but if you buy the carbon mesh, it's going to smell and it has this chemical on it. You don't want that. Uh, you want the aluminum and you could even like open it up and smell it to make sure there's nothing sprayed on it. Uh, cause you don't want those. Well, first of all, you don't want those chemicals near you. Second of all, you won't be able to sleep with the smell of carbon. I, I tried, I made that mistake. So as you can see on here, you know, showing you how to cut the mesh for your screen door. Cause that's what this is. Uh, this roll is 48 inches by 25 feet. And you know, if I open this up, it, it's, it's a lot of mesh and this was $30 and I needed four rolls of this to do this bed. Uh, so what I did was, uh, I took this whole roll, I draped it over the top and I cut it at the bottom and the bottom over there. And then I draped the other one over. It's fairly simple. So there's half a sheet draped over the top on the right side. There's half a sheet draped over the top on the left side. So as you guys can see, you know, this is draped over here so I can get in and out. Two sheets on the top. Under here, there's actually a mesh sheet under the mattress. That's uh, two mesh sheets side by side under here. That's going to block any EMF that's coming up from underneath. Everything is, you know, zip tied together. You know, I, I just poked holes with scissors in the, in the mesh and then I zip tied it through. You know, sometimes I had to attach two zip ties together. You know, nothing crazy, nothing complicated. On the side here, same thing, you know, two sheets of mesh overlapping draped all the way down to the bottom, you know, going over the aluminum that's underneath here under the mattress, making sure, you know, it's essentially encased with no spaces. You really don't want to do this, spend all this time and money on this type of stuff, you know, without making sure you're blocking all sources of EMF. And, and of course, this can always be tested. Again, you know, same thing up here, two sheets overlapping on the other side. Uh, so pretty simple. I mean, all the equipment you really need is, you know, the bed frame, the aluminum mesh, and some zip ties. That, that's really it. Uh, it is a little time consuming, takes maybe three to four hours. So Frank, do you actually notice a difference sleeping in this cage? And, you know, before I had this set up, I actually left my cell phone on several nights and I would notice 
you know, I'd have very poor sleep quality, you know, I'd have a headache, and just in general, uh, really, really bad. You know, I had uh, my desktop set up to Wi-Fi, and that was when my insomnia actually started, uh, you know, Wi-Fi related issues for sure. So if you are in a low EMF environment, then is this really necessary? That's up to you. You know, you can get a meter, you can get it tested, but most people are in a suburban environment. Most people do have all of these Wi-Fi sources. And before you guys go and do something crazy like this, you know, do what I suggested earlier, you know, turn all your electronics off at night, make sure your phone is off, you know, don't use AirPods, don't use Bluetooth, don't use any of that stuff. Uh, for those of you that are concerned about like blue light, and the red light stuff, this supersedes that dramatically. You know, if you could be worried about blue light all you want, but the electromagnetic fields are far worse than that uh, from a mechanistic standpoint and how they can affect you. Yes, you know, blue light is bad. You shouldn't be staring at, you know, a blue screen before you go to bed. You shouldn't be staring at your phone before you go to bed. But I have a feeling that all of this information around blue light and people saying to avoid screens at night and electronic devices before bed is actually a way of them warning you about EMF without educating you about what EMF is. So thank you guys for joining me. Above all, if you could please share the video, you know, this is a very touchy subject that I'm not too comfortable talking about on my channel that often. You know, if you Google chemtrails, comes up as a conspiracy theory. If you Google climate engineering, it's suddenly not a conspiracy theory. And, and the reason I am putting this out there is because I've consulted many, many people and I've fixed their diets, I've incorporated nutrient density, and despite how much I fixed their diet, despite you know what we do for their exercise routine, with their activity every day, if you're in a high EMF environment, that could be the sole cause of all of your health issues. And honestly, in at least 20 to 30% of my clients, that is the case. Uh, so if you guys could please like the video, if you haven't subscribed, definitely do hit that bell icon. If you guys do want to support me further, check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, bringing you high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. Go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. You can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thanks again for joining me guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.